So for the first question here, the total amount paid in tax was 24% of the earnings. So 32,000 times 24%, we should get 7,680. So this will be the tax amount she have to pay. So 2019, the earnings increased by 7%. So from 2018, 332,000 there, you multiply it with 100% plus 7%. So this 107%, okay, it breaks down into the origin amount of 100% plus the increment of 7%. So your final answer should be 34,240. For part B, okay, 5,000 at a rate of 2% per year compound interest. So 5,000 times 100% plus 2% to the power of 3. You should get 5,306.04. So question C is very tricky because the way they phrase the question. So if you overlook the remaining value, then you shouldn't uh, be able to solve this question lah. so the first thing I did was I take uh, 1 minus 1 over 5 to find the remaining fraction so 360 times 4 over 5 you can actually get 288 so this is a balance after purchasing per present for her parents then two thirds of the remaining money was being spent so which means the balance will be 1 over 3 so 288 times 1 over 3, she get 96. So this 96 here is the amount of money that she spent for buying a present for her sister. So 96 divided by 360 times 100, you should get 26.7% as your final answer. As for question D here, so 2018 times 109%, it should be 36,515. So to find the original amount, simply by taking 36,515 divided by 109%, it should be 33,500. Question E is slightly tricky because you need to introduce unknown into the ratio. So please repeat uh, reading the question first before approaching this question. So first thing that I did was to calculate the total ratio for each year. For 2018, the total ratio was 5 plus 7, which is 12. And for 2019, it was 22. So I set the total rent paid for 2018 as X and the rent paid of 2019 as Y. So from the first statement over there, Arjun paid the same amount of rent in both 2018 and 2019. So I know that 5 over 12 of the total will be equals to 9 over 22 Y of the total rent paid in 2019. So when this is equals to each other, because I wanted to arrange them into uh, like how we normally solve an algebra question, so I selected X as the subject. So we have 9 over 22 Y divided by 5 over 12. It should be 54 over 55 Y. So for the next question, Gretel paid 290 more rents in 2019 than she paid in 2018. So when I took 2019 minus by 2018, the balance should be 290. So 13 over 22y minus 7 over 12x equals to 290. So by substituting our x equals to 54 over 55y into the equation, you should get 1 over 55y equals to 290. And 290 multiplied with 55, it should be 15,950. So when you arrive at this step, you already secured 3 marks. And the final marks comes from correctly calculating how much did Arjun pay in 2019. So you take the 15,950 that you identified, 
multiplied with 9 over 22, you should get 6,525 as the final results. So the tricky question is question 1E e here. Question two, pretty straightforward. All you need to do is to identify the midpoint whenever you notice that the height was given in interval format. So the midpoint will be 1.35, 1.45, 1.55, 1.65, 1.75 and 1.85 respectively. So even before approaching the question, I know that I will need this information here if we have mean calculation later on. So I will always do it first. It's just a standard practice of mine. You don't have to follow. So the midpoint actually identifying by adding 1.3 and 1.4 up and then divide it by two. Okay. So A number one, identifying the model class. Okay. Means you have to look for the interval that has the most frequency count. So in our case, it will be H less than equals to 1.6 and more than 1.5 so as expected there's mean calculation here so i took the midpoint that i identified multiplied with their respective frequency and divided by the total so total you can have two ways to identify this either through cumulative frequency by adding all the frequency up or you just read from the question and you will know that it is a uh, survey done on 120 boys. So I divided it by 120 immediately and I get 1.62 meters as the final answer. As for part B, one boy is chosen at random from the club. Find the probability that this boy has a height greater than 1.8 meters. So it will be referring to the interval with h less than equals to 1.9 and more than 1.8 so over there we actually have 14 students okay divided by 120 after simplifying it you should get 7 over 60 for the final answer of this and for three boys randomly selected from the club okay uh because they didn't specify like which one should come first Okay, so I actually list down all the possible arrangement where these three boys follow the arrangement of more than 1.8, then the next two will be less than equals to 1.4. Scenario two will be less than 1.4 come first, then the last man that I chosen was more than 1.8, and the last combination will be mixed, where I selected less than equals to 1.4, then followed by more than 1.8, then less than equals to 1.4 again. So all these three scenarios add up, you should get your final answer of 21 over 20,060. So some of you might confuse, what actually changes in the denominator and also numerator? So things to take note is that when it comes to probability surrounding a human being, Okay, it can be teachers, it can be students, it can be boys, it can be girls, okay, anything that involves human being. Please remember that this is a default rule where after each selection process, your total numbers of people that you can choose from will automatically decrease. Okay, they won't specifically mention it to you. You have to know it and you have to minus it off after each selection process. So if you notice that uh, the denominator always decreased from 120 to 119 and 118. So this is the details. So for section C, cumulative frequency. So how do I get to 55? Is by taking 25 plus 30. Then from 79, it's actually 55 plus 24. And 106, I got it from 79 plus 27. And the last one will be 120. So I roughly illustrated the cumulative frequency diagram over here. 
is slightly inaccurate, especially for the parts between 1.6 to 1.7, which I'm not satisfied with my own drawings. Okay. So for us to calculate the median height, okay, I took 120 times 50%, I will get 68. So from the cumulative frequency 60, I trace it back to the height section. It should be 1.62 approximately. So there's an acceptable range for it. If your answer is not exactly the same as mine, no worries about it. And for part 2, 40th percentile, okay, so I took 120 times 40%. It should be 48 tiered. So 48, when I trace it back, it will result in 1.58 meters. As for question three, okay, substitute U, T, and A's value into it. You should get 378 over five, which translates into 75.6. As for part B, don't get confused by the arrangement. Just take 3A minus A and negative 5B plus 2B. You should get your final results as 2A minus 3B. And the section two of it, I first took the five, okay. I cancel it off with the 20 over there. So the 20 will have a balance of four and the X immediately cuts off. And from 3 to 9, you have a balance of 3. So after the final calculation, it should be 3 over 4. And for part C, I cross multiply them. I get negative 3x equals to 15. 3x equals to negative 15. So x equals to negative 15 divided by 3. Your final answer for x will be negative 5. Section 2, multiplying the 4 into the brackets, should get 20 minus 12x equals to 23. After the rearrangement, you should get your x value as negative 1 over 4, which translates into negative 0 0.25. As for question D, Multiply the 2 over 3 powers into the value inside the bracket. We have 27 to the power of 2 over 3 and x to the power of 9 times 2 over 3. After the calculation, you will get 9x to the power of 6. So expand and simplify, you will have 3x multiplied with 2x and 3x multiplied with y followed by negative 5y multiplied with 2x and negative 5y multiplied with y. After the calculation, you should get 6x squared minus 7xy minus 5y squared as your final results. So you couldn't actually factorize this, so you just leave it as it is. Question 4 here, draw an image of t after reflection of line y equals to negative 1. So from there, I label it as t with a dot. As for part b, with a rotation of 90 degree clockwise from 0, 0. So I label it as t2 dot over there. Then the last one is actually with a translation. Okay, it is a vector of 5, negative 9. So the 5 at the top represent changes in x because it's shifted towards the right hand side and the negative 9 represent changes in y where it shift down by 9 steps. Question 5. Okay, a standard practice of mine is to list down all the possible values first before proceeding with the sorting section. So x less than equals to 50, more than equals to 41. So the numbers that we have is 41, 42, 43, 44, until 50. So for A, it is an odd number. So from the selection that we have, it should be 41, 43, 45, 47, and 49. Multiple of 3, we have 42, 45, 48. And it is a prime numbers, then we have 41, 43, and 47. So after identifying all this, I can proceed with the filling up process. 
So this, I couldn't actually explain much. I just compare and fill up them accordingly. So some space, because there's no information for it, so I just leave it as blank. List down the elements where A intersect with C. The keyword here is listing down the elements. So after I put down the brackets, so A intersect with C, we have three of them, which is 41, 43, 47. These are the variables that was repeating among A and C. And for B union with C and everything other than it, okay, we have 44, 46, 49, and 50. As for section C, the numbers of A intersect with B intersect with C, this one will be zero because there was nothing that was overlapped over there. For question six, okay, each week he make X basket and Y mats. Okay, he makes fewer than 10 mats Okay, this was already been given. So they constructed Y less than 10 for you. Then the next information was the numbers of mat he makes is greater than or equals to numbers of basket he make. So Y more than equals to X will be your next inequalities. So for part B, okay, actually convert the fraction into decimal. So we have two, 0.25x plus 1.5y less than equals to 22.5. How do I know it is less than equals to? It's because of the keyword maximum. So I decided to get rid of the decimal place. So I multiply everything by 4, then divide them by 3 to fulfill the requirement of 3y plus 3x plus 2y less than equals to 30. So with all this information, I can proceed to draw out the illustration here. So the first line that I drew was y less than 10. Because it is not less than equals to, the line that I drawn was dotted. Then I proceed with y more than x, okay, and it is more than equals to, right? So I use this as a solid line. And then I drew this line over here. So if you notice, I actually put an arrow over there to represent which region that they are referring to. So I roughly know that from this two line that I've drawn, they are referring to the triangle that we have. Then for the last line, I actually have to set out some random points at the top, which is when y equals to zero, my x will be 10. When x equals to zero, my y will be 15. So this will be the, our x and y intercept. After drawing the line out, okay, I know that the region that they are referring to is actually the trapezium shape at the left-hand corner. So with this being said, they wanted us to calculate the maximum profit each week. Okay, uh, immediately, for this type of question, I always look at the corner. However, this time around, two of the corners was being excluded from the calculation because it was dotted line over there. So I move on to the nearest uh, solid variables over there. It will be 4, 9. That's the coordinates that we are using here. So 4 times 40 plus 9 times 28. You should get your results as 412. Okay, I actually compared uh, with the coordinate 6, 6, but I didn't include the calculation because by running manual calculation, you should know that it's actually lesser than 412. So this 412 will be the maximum profit that you can make. Question 7. Okay, uh, the graph here is kind of tricky. Okay, and it is about bearing question with a combination of cosine rule and sine rule. So instead of writing them all together, I actually illustrate it separately. 
So the first question they wanted to show that BC is 118.1 meters after correcting to one decimal place. To identify BC, we'll be using cosine rule because we already have the angle of 72 degree as well the sides which is 80 m and 115 m respectively. So by substituting them into the right place, you should get your results as 118.1. As for part B, we are using sine rule here. I listed down the details. We are comparing sine angle ABC over AC equals to sine BAC over BC. Please remember this. Whether you're writing the sine at the top or the bottom, it doesn't matter. As long as both sides of the variables, you follow the same arrangement. If today you wanted to write AC at the top, then over at the other side, BC must be at the top. That's all. You don't have to specifically follow uh, sign must be at the top with identifying the sides value or identifying the angle value. It's not necessary. So after filling up all the information, ABC is actually sine inverse of sine 72 over 118.1 multiplied with 115. So the final answer for this will be 67.8. Question C, identifying A from B. Okay, for this, we utilize the information given, which is 147 degree. I'm minusing it off with 72. You will get a balance of 75. And this 75 degree here using alternate segment theorem, you can transfer it to the opposite. So B from A will be taking 180 plus 75 and you get your final answer as 255. As for B from C, we're using the original format that was given to us. Since we know that the entire thing was 75, which means 75 minus 67.5, we should get a balance of 7.2. However, because it is bearing question, so please remember if any value that's less than 100, please put zero at the front. So we will have 007.2. As for part D, it takes 35 seconds to run A to C, calculate in kilometers per hour. So 115 meters is not in kilometers yet. So you're required to run the conversion and write it as 0 0.115 kilometers. 35 seconds, you should have changed it into hour format as well. So 35 divided by 60, divided by 60. So speed equals to 0 0.115 divided by 35, divided by 60, divided by 60. So answer for this will be 11.8. Calculating the shortest distance from point B to AC. So point B here, uh, we have the information of 72 degree. We have the hypotenuse results of this 72 degree and we are looking for the opposite here. So immediately I think of using sine. Okay, 72 degree equals to opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite value would be actually be sine 72 times 80, which is 76.1. As for question 8A number 1, just illustrating this out. Okay, sine x, pretty straightforward. You can just draw it here. So describe fully the symmetry of the graph y equals to sine x. So this, they are looking for rotational symmetry. So if I were to set the point at the center, which is 180 degree comma zero, that's the coordinates. Okay, I actually have a rotational symmetry with an order of two because when I flip it 180 degree and 360 degree, it will fall back to the same side. As for part B, some calculation on quadrant is required. So if you're unfamiliar with 
this topic here, you can actually refer to the video I created in my revision guide. So let's go through the basics. I shift off the negative one first. Here we get sine x equals to 3 over 4 because the 4 and sine x is multiplied. When you shift it away, it becomes divide. So x equals to sine inverse of 3 over 4. So when you key in your calculator, you will get 48.6 only. However, because of the range is 0 to 360, and for sine to be positive, you have answer in the first and the second quadrant. So we'll be taking 180 minus 48.6. You should get your answer as 131.4. As for part C, okay, this one is the completing the square. Okay, again, I'm using my own shortcut way. If you need further details on this, please refer to the revision guide video. So I replace the x, okay, as a, and I compare my 10x with 2ab. So I immediately know that my x is a, so I substituted it, 10x equals to 2xb so my b's calculation will be 5 okay so the brackets the value inside the brackets i will replace it as 5 so now what we have will be x plus 5 bracket square and the integer value that we didn't use was plus 14 okay i have to minus it off with the b that we identified which is 5 and remember to square it because in the formula a plus b bracket square when you expand it it will result in a square plus 2ab plus b square a b square was being added into it so required to run the minus off process at the end on the integers so 14 minus 25 you will get 11 so the final answer for this will be x plus 5 bracket square minus 11 And for us to sketch out the graph, okay, the turning point here, you can identify through putting x plus 5 bracket square equals to 0. Your x will be negative 5 and your y will be negative 11, which is the integer's value that you left out outside of the brackets. So for that, you will know that that's the turning point. And the additional information that I will identify is the y-intercept. So y-intercept is when x equals to 0 by substituting x equals to 0 into y equals to x squared plus 10x plus 14 you will get the intercept as 14. So I draw it out as shown over here. If you were to do extra steps to this you have to use quadratic formula to identify both the x coordinates which is negative 8.32 and negative 1.68 but this is not necessary because the major assessment here is whether you know that what's your turning point and how do you identify it from your completing the square. So the additional things that I would recommend to do for your graph to be accurate is to find the y-intercept. If you have time, then only you label the intersection on the x-axis. Question 16, okay, they are referring to a total parameter. So because of the keyword parameter, please remember to include two radius. So 8 plus 8 plus 165 over 360 times 2 times pi times 8. So from this calculation, you will get 29.04. And for part B, they are referring to the area of this sector Okay, 165 over 360 times pi times 8 squared. You will get 88 over 3 pi. And this will be equals to the surface area of the sphere that they are looking for. So I put it equals to 4 pi r squared and try to identify what's our r value here. So through the arrangement, you will know your r equals to square root of 22 over 3, which translates into 2.71.
So for section C, it's actually kind of tricky because it was a uh, build up from section A, the graph that was originally given. So they fold it and make it a cone. Okay, please take note on this. The arc length that we identified earlier is actually equals to our new circle arc length. So 2 pi r equals to 165 over 360 times 2 times pi times 8. By running the calculation, I cancel off the 2 pi first and I took 165 over 360 times 8 and I got an 11 over 3. If I were to write it in three significant figures, it will be 3.67. So the part 3, they wanted us to calculate the volume of the cone. OA's value is actually 8. Okay, which means the hypotenuse value is 8 and they are looking for the height here. So I'll be using Pythagoras theorem where square root of 8 square minus 11 over 3 square. The final answer for this will be 7.11. Substituting it, okay, remember to square the 3.67, you should get your answer as 100.29. Question 10a, okay, it is a rhombus and calculating AC's length, we are just using the formula. Square root of x1 minus x2, okay, remember to square the results, adding it with y1 minus y2 and remember to square the results as well. So you have 7 square root 5 which translates into 15.7. And so part two, show the equation that line AC is negative 2x plus 4. Okay, I'll be calculating the gradient first using the A and C point given. So I labeled them as y1, y2, x1, x2. Run the calculation, you should get negative 2. So this will help us to prove that the gradient is correct and it matches. So I then proceed with identifying the y-intercept by randomly substituting one of the coordinates. So in our case, I substituted point A. Okay, by putting them in the right place, my C will be 4. But please remember this, it's not necessary to follow me to substitute point A. You can proceed with substitute point C if you want. You will still get the same answer. As for part 3, finding the equation of BD. So this thing here, you have to look at the graph that I illustrated at the right hand side. So please take note that because of the diagonal will join up for rhombus and it will form 90 degree at the center, which means uh, the line BD there will actually be perpendicular to our line AC. And also it will bisect it so you actually have to identify the midpoint along the process to accurately form the equation. So m original times m new equals to negative 1. So our m new here will be negative 1 divided by negative 2, which translates into 1 over 2. And our midpoint will be taking a x value of negative 3 plus 4 divided by 2 and 10 minus 4 divided by 2 to identify it as 1 over 2 and 3. By substituting this into y equals to 1 over 2x plus c, you should get your c's value as 11 over 4. And your final answer for this will be y equals to 1 over 2x plus 11 over 4. Part B. This is a newly added topic. And please take note on this. When you saw turning points, when you saw stationary points, uh, this represent differentiation. So you need to differentiate it and put it dy dx equals to zero to identify the exact coordinates. So your dy dx that I gotten will be 3x squared plus 16x plus five. So actually include a calculation in details if you are struggling on what, uh, on how I get to this, okay? The x cubed, I actually written it as one x cubed I transfer the 3 out and minus the power by 1. So I gotten 3x squared from it. And for 8, I multiply it by 2, I gotten 16. And the x, the power.
power 2 and minus 8 by 1. So the 5x over there, because uh, they didn't write anything, so I include a power of 1 for your illustration purpose. If you're familiar with this topic, the adding the 1 is not necessary. So 1 times 5, and then the x will be 1 minus 1. So through this, you get 3x squared minus 16x plus 5. So the x to the power of 0 will be 1. Okay, please take note on this. Then I set my dy dx equals to 0. After the factorization process that I did on the left hand side, I get my x value as negative 1 over 3 and negative 5. By substituting this negative 1 over 3 and negative 5 into the y equation that we originally been given, you should get your results as negative 22 over 27 and 50. So the two coordinates that we have will be negative 1 over 3 and negative 22 over 27 as well as negative 5 and 50. So the turning point determining whether it's maximum or minimum, okay? If you were to illustrate it out, like what I did on the right-hand side, you can immediately know that negative 5, 50 is the maximum and negative 103 and negative 2, 22 over 27 is the minimum. Alternatively, you have to do your second differentiation, okay? And you substitute the negative 5 value and negative 1 over 3 into it. If your d2y dx2 turn out to be negative, then it is the maximum. And if it turns out to be positive, it will be the minimum. So please take note on these little details. You have two options to do this. Either you have to sketch it out or you just do the second derivative. So that's pretty much it for this newly uh, updated syllabus our set 41 May June 2020 so if you have friends that are struggling to solve this paper feel free to share this to them and I wish you all the best in your upcoming examination thank you